Well, it's got 42 inch treps, an insane roll cage, exhaust out the bonnet, and some of the wildest suspension you'll ever see. This is Sussman Sand Episode 8, and this is Australia's wildest GU. Well, you probably recognise this man, you might recognise the workshop, but you definitely won't recognise this car. Dave, this is the Central Coast Blue Flame store, and this is his new bastardised Frankenstein creation, and it is absolutely sick. A lot of you guys love it, most of you hate it, and we're going to talk about it today. Dave, what have you done? What is this car? Right, where did it start? Um, so, I always like to take on a couple projects through the year. I found this S4 Patrol on uh, Marketplace, nine grand, so I had to get it. Had to, it's got the... Uh, Three litre common rail in it, had some issues, motor. the injectors, yeah, 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 the awesome, the Ridgey Ditch really motor. Nice so, one, yeah. yeah, we got it back. Uh, it was completely basically stock other than a bar. Yep. So, it was, it started off, we just wanted to do like a budget build, yeah. big tyres, you know, just full trail beater. So, yeah. it kind of went a little bit further than that, but it's still, as a sense, you know, still like a cheap build that anyone could, you know, yeah, basically big time. do. Most of the parts off this car are available off yep. the shelf. You know, lots of superior gear and that kind of thing. Obviously, the bar work, not so much, but most of the other stuff yeah. is yes. and. For a nine grand base car, sold a couple grands worth of stuff off. We that did, car. yeah. We sold like two and a half grands worth of stuff, you know, so that was like six and a half grand. Six and a half grand for a for a two thousand and eight GU is pretty darn good. Yeah. And well, I think you're a little bit carried away, but we uh, we're going to talk about it today. Before you guys ask, is this car registered? Is it defective? Well, absolutely not to both of those. It can't yes. be defected because it's not registered, and it's uh, not registered, nor will it ever be registered. No, it won't be. No, it's, uh, a lot of people will always, oh, it's you know registered. No, we're not going to register this thing. It's all just a trailer truck. Unfortunately, as much as everyone likes to see this thing hurling down the M1, yeah, uh, we're not going to be doing that. So. No, no. If we were anywhere but Australia, it would be absolutely fine. But here we are, dealing with what we're dealing with. So this will be a trailer queen, and um, well, it's not quite an ultra four. It's not quite a winch truck no, or comp truck, but it's sort of a blend between a street car yeah. uh, style build and then something that can just be absolutely rummaged and fed. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's just basically full, you know, cheap starting base for a you know, full trail beater, get out there, have a laugh, have a yarn with the boys, yeah. and see how far you can push a full body wagon. Um, yeah. yeah, like I said, it's not a winch truck, it's not an Ultra 4, so you know, it's not gonna be as capable as those, but you can have a good time doing it. Yeah, so, big time. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, not feel bad about beating on it. Exactly. Well, where can we start up the front, so, the bar yeah, work? The front, so basically we had in mind uh, Mitch Favreau, so he did the bar work and the exo cage. Yep. Initially, we just wanted to do a front bar, something a bit unique, you know, nice and high. Yep. Uh, sliders and a rear bar with a winch. But when I was up there, I was like, hell, let's just throw some bars over the roof and piss everyone off. So we yep. did that. Uh, and you've achieved it. We the, did, the yeah. So we've already upset. put it on the side already. So. These people are already in the comments below going, oh, it's the heaviest GU in Australia, blah, blah, blah. You can all f off. It looks phenomenal. Up the front, there's is zero overhang down low. The grille yep. is like pretty much the furthest part that sticks out, which means the front approach angle yeah, is it's really, really good. Sanity. Yep. Hiding behind there, big high mount. Yeah, just got a worn high mount, fully rebuilt, uh, larger motor. I think it's a 9.5 on there, double yep. at high mount. So yeah, awesome winch. Fantastic. Uh, it's just 12 volt, wanted to keep a single motor, simple. Like yep. I said, it's not a race truck. Didn't want to go, you know, twin motor, 24 volt, extra weight. It's yeah. got enough. So yeah, that works time. really, really well. And obviously, Pissed off all the uh, aircon stuff. Moved, yeah, basically. It. Yeah, relocate everything back. So yeah. just the radiator in there and that. So yeah, sick. Wow, yeah. man, you've done that. Uh, you've done very well. GME radio, good comms. Why not? We noticed there's an exhaust hanging yeah. out the bonnet. <laughs> so, Again, why not? Is that yeah, a so? Why not? We're, you know, we're probably going to LS this thing later in the year. So yeah. you know, with the uh, four link in the back, the exhaust, the whole thing had to go. So we just thought, yeah. like, hell, let's just cut a hole in the bonnet and jam it through there. Yeah. As on the weekend, we broke the engine mount and it's kind of fed the bonnet, but. Oh, that's all in a day's work. Yeah, so. Speedbus loves it anyway. Yeah. Um, in terms of people asking, how do you replace the windscreen and that kind of thing? The entire cage has been incorporated with roll bar joiners. Correct. Yeah. So you can just basically unbolt the whole top half and yeah. it just comes straight so off. You yeah. can still run this as quite a simple bar work setup with sliders and a front bar. Yeah. And that sure kind of thing. can. Lift the most of that cage off. Change your windscreen, for whatever reason, and uh, you know do bits and pieces and. Uh, yeah, it's insane. Where can we go around the side? Because obviously this car is on massive tires, and uh, if you're a GU owner, especially a wagon, 
it's not that easy to squeeze massive tyres under these things. So Dave has had to do a ton of work to make this happen with a uh, panel beater and himself. What, what's involved? Yeah, so basically we moved the diff uh, 50 mil forward. Yep. Uh, we've cut out the firewall, uh, the floor pan. We've moved it back around four inches. So we had to move the pedal box and stuff behind there. Yep. Uh, we did this with three mil plates. So yep. it's like a battering ram for sticks Super and stuff. Strong, nice. Yeah, so we put it through there. We've just basically rolled up the inner edge and cut it here. We used the factory flares, just hacked them to bits and pushed them up. Yeah. Um, just a bit of a laugh. Yeah, uh, nice. So we've like lifted that guard height up as well. We have, yeah, three, the guard four height's inches. up probably around yeah, four, four to five inches up, yeah, nice. so a lot, a lot of meat's been cut out. Heaps of room in there for these massive tyres. Speaking of, we're looking at... Oh uh, yeah, the Maxxis 42. Trap. Yeah, 42 inch traps, yeah. bias ply, super sticky. Um, they're mounted to a beadlock? Yeah, beadlock, yeah, Procon, oh sorry, not Procon, uh, Raceline beadlock. Yep. Uh, we've got the 50 mil wheel space by Superior on there just to move it out as well, and the yeah. NIG 38 rim, so it works really well. It doesn't foul or hit anything in there. Yeah, so. nice, because I guess one of the biggest things about clearancing something like that is you need to know where the tyre is going to be sitting in order to exactly. clearance it. Otherwise, if you clearance it first and then slap a uh, NEG 44 on there, you might still find it hits everything. So, yeah, yeah, that's um, exactly right. You've yeah. done really well there. I reckon we uh, crouch down and talk about the front suspension because that's where things get really kinky on this vehicle. Uh, you probably haven't seen a, a big bodied wagon do flex like this before. So, um, it's uh, there's a lot going on to make this work. So, uh, let's talk about it. So what are we looking at? So yeah, basically GU front diff, yep. I've just braced it, braced knuckles, top truss. Uh, it's got a Wild Customs X-Link in the front. So I've actually yep. never ran one of these in one of my vehicles. A few of my mates have over the years. So I just wanted to give it a go. So yep. we just chucked it in there. It um, articulates a hell of a lot more than a five link. So I've had five yep. links in some other patrols. It just works a lot better. Yep. I'll talk about sway bars in a second. Yep. But um, yeah, other than that, it's got the X-Link. It's got like a seven inch 80 series 2.0 superior shock in there. Just a nice long one, the yep. longest they make. Yep. Uh, we've got around about in the front, I believe it's around 140 mil bump extension plus an 80 bump. That's another thing we're still working on. Yep. Uh, just uh, superior drag, uh, tie for the moment and Panard. Yep. Uh, got Benji from Ramp, like I said, he's gonna do a, a nice high clearance kit for this as well, which is yep. coming this week, I believe. Yep. So that'll be going there. Yeah, I still um, be mad in this. Yeah, it'd be really, really good. Uh, other than that, it's all very, very straightforward. It's just a hybrid style drop box, um, you know, superior fixed arm, nothing crazy about it. Yeah, you know, it's all off the shelf stuff. Arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah. You're going braided lines front and rear. Yeah, braided all lines the throughout the whole vehicle. Yeah, yeah. a lot of DBA rotors. Yep. Ceramic pads, yeah, yeah all that nice. stuff, they work really well. Yeah, so. beautiful. So I think that's a big thing, people put massive tyres, huge lifts, lots This of thing stops, cars, yeah, you, you can near enough uh, lock these tyres yeah, up, people yeah. get quite surprised and take it for a run and it stops really well. Yeah, so. no, that's sick. And yeah. I can imagine it would be just feel so much more free with that X-Link in the front of it. Very Obviously, free, not yeah. being registered, it gives you the flexibility to happily chuck an X-Link in a car and not have to worry about legalities. Exactly, kind of yeah, yeah. There's now, a lot of illegal stuff for this. As, yeah, as we saw on the weekend, we went wheeling, um, now this car, as it sits right now, no sway bars, but I think what we found yeah. out after taking it for its first sort of rundown voyage was that it probably needs them. Yeah, yeah. I gathered that I was definitely going to run a torch and sway bar in the rear, but we wanted to get on the tracks for the weekend. Yeah. So definitely going to be putting a torch and sway bar in the rear, potentially the front as well. Yeah. Um, and we're going to lower it around 50 mil, just yeah. the sheer height of it, just the 42s is just that much higher it's, again. Yeah, it's a massive yeah, we want to get it a bit lower. So around a, if we can keep around a three to four inch lift with a 42, torch and sway bars, be yeah, better truck. Super yeah, super stable, et cetera. Yeah, that's Absolutely mad. Let's go around the side. We'll take a level look at this bar work because it truly is something. Yeah, so basically, uh, yeah, Fabro's done an amazing job. We moved yep. the, the sliders out. Uh, yeah. We kind of line up a bit further than big the Big kicker front. is sick. Yeah, yeah, big kicker yeah. side there. Those uh, rear doors look like they really open well as well, which is fine. We're not going to talk about that. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about, the chassis, obviously yep. laminated in the middle. Yeah, so basically I haven't bothered as, you know, it's not a race truck, so I'm getting sent and jumping and stuff. So yep. I've just laminated the rear section because I've cut out a lot of the support throughout the back to put the forelink in. Yep. Uh, the front's just all basically standard for now, but yep. yeah, the back is braced from about here and around the side there. Yep. Um, but yeah, we, we've kept the chassis pretty simple. Like I said, it's not jumping, it's just a yeah, full sick. trail beater. Yeah, so. and in terms of the chassis bracing, the diff bracing and all that kind of thing, you do that all in-house. Yeah, we do all that in-house. Yeah, we do yeah. a hell of a lot of all your dual cab utes and everything. We do so much of it through here. So. Yeah, sick. You got clear views on at the moment. They're about to go in the bin. Yeah, have the they're good for the bar week, see past that, but yeah, yeah, when you fold them in, you can't see out. So they're, they're yeah, going, they actually time. came with the vehicle, so that yeah, was definitely sick. going. Oh, we can sell those and get a bit of money. Yeah, anyone want some clear views? Yeah, that's right, comment below. We're yeah. not gonna give them 20 bucks. Anyway, but yeah. uh, awesome, well, let's go around the other side. We'll take a look at that rear quarter section of bar work and uh, talk about the rear suspension. Now, before we dive into the rear suspension, this rear sort of bar work, let's talk about driveline. 
There's a lot going on here. So ZD30, yuck, that's okay. Manual, which means yep. probably reductions in there. Yeah, so we've got the manual, just an MPC clutch. Yep. Uh, we've got the Marks, 85% reductions. Yep. Going to the diffs, just four sixes. Nitro yep. in the front, I believe. I think the rears are just Japanese missing diff, four six. Yep. Uh, factory rear axles, uh, I do keep spares because they do twist, especially okay. with the 40s and 42s, they do twist, but I've got spares. Yep. The front's just RCVs. Yep. Um, got the superior. Superior, yeah, Cromoly hubs, yep. so they work really well. Yep. Um, but other strong. than that, it's all very straightforward. So I didn't want to go 488s just because they do have a tendency to break easier. Yeah, at least with the four sixes, a bit more strong. Yeah, and just easy to get to. So I got, yep. I got spare diffs for this thing and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Yeah, nice. And you're probably going to need them. Cause oh, yeah. I With think... this engine, it's been pretty good. It's a gutless turd, but yeah, yeah. once we go bigger power, yeah, because it's, 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 it's not only are these a super sticky tire, but they're so freaking big. They are, yeah. They just weigh so much. So the rotational mass of this thing, especially off road, aired down, so much grip, so much weight there that the actual rotating mass is so, so much more than what a 35 or 37 would be. Um, so you do have to keep that all in mind. Um, super sick. Absolutely loving it. Let's talk four link while we're here. Yeah. This is probably one of the most impressive things yeah, about the is, whole this wagon. Yeah, this is my favourite part of this build, I believe. Yeah, Benji's, uh, Benji's nailed thrown it. it out of the park this one. Yeah, yeah. it's um, insane. So we've been speaking to him about this for a while. He's been speaking to other guys as well about yeah. developing a four link for a patrol. Yeah. As you know, there's a few mobs on the market that are doing, the, yeah. uh, doing him. This one is, yeah, like second to none on the four link market for a patrol. Yeah. Uh, off the shelf, you know what I mean? I'm sure there's some pretty gun guys doing their yeah. own thing, but yeah, yeah. basically, yeah, based off the GU uh, housing, yep. uh, there is talk that we'll be doing with the Dana 6070 housings later. Right, so okay. that's going to be pretty interesting. That'll be wild. Yeah, yeah, I'll be definitely putting my hand up for that one. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's basically GU diff. Yep. Uh, it's got the truss on top, the rear brace. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, the box is all welded in under the chassis there. Yep. We've got to cut out the, the structural hoop in the front where your normal five link goes, so that's yep. got to go. Yep. Um, and then people ask, how do we brace it? So under the back here, he does an off the shelf. So you can actually buy this separately. It's a coil truss yep. uh, that uh, braces the coils uh, top to the bottom, whatever. But yep. um, these trusses generally for the utes. But you can put them in a body. This has got no body lift. Uh, you yep. just have to cut these ridges out a bit. A lot of questions about that. Yep. So we basically just cut that fold and then, for, yeah, a bit yeah. of rust treating, whatever. And then yep. it fits in there neatly. So. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Definitely an important part of it as well. Super, super long shocks from Superior again. Yeah, yeah. Um, these are just GU shocks? No, nah, they're just 80 series 80 70 shocks. shocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, because we moved them up here, like I'm nearly at the point where I have to go through the floor, but yeah. like I said, we're not just, going coilovers just yet. Not so. quite. Yeah, no, it's sick. And yeah. again, something super nice about this, especially the rear diff, is that the lowest point is the bottom of the pumpkin. The shock yes, mounts don't correct. dangle Correct, so your down. shock mounts have been moved up. Yeah, which, line, is, um, which is super, super nice. sick, because you yeah. probably find when, when you start wheeling more technical tracks, you guys out there probably know, just rear shock mounts. Yeah, you collect them all the time. I've actually repaired them. quite a few of them being yeah. hacked off. Yeah. yeah, one of the beautiful things about a four link is the fact that there is next to no rear steer. Yeah, you especially with this see. setup. Yeah, this yeah. setup, super neutral, super straight, no crabbing, no weird, um, you know, rear steer that patrols get, 80s get and all that sort of thing. So that's super nice to see. In the arms, alloy arms, Himes up the front, massive Himes, might I say, yeah, yeah. and then bushes at the diff end. Yeah, correct. Yeah, Himes at chassis end and uh, bushes at the diff. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it works sick. really, really well. Absolutely wild. Dropout cones, coil retainers, custom filler, braided lines. Like, yeah. this is just, in terms of Benji and Dave's Christmas wish list, this is at every box ticked twice, and um, and they've they've delivered the goods, I think. Yeah, so um, if you do, yeah, guys want to know more about that, hit up Ramp, Ramp Customs. Uh, these yeah. kits will be getting uh, more in stock soon, I believe, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sick. Awesome, well, let's jump over to that side and talk about trying to squeeze a 42 inch tire into the rear of a wagon because that's another thing that is no easy feat, no easy task. And uh, I'm sure Dave and the panel leader had a hell of a time making it happen. Yeah, so basically we just moved the body. Body comes down here. So we moved the body in around three inches in the back, I believe. And we he, just basically- He says just... it so casually, oh, we just, we just moved the body four yeah, inches. Oh, it's a lot of fun, yeah. 100 mil of, of Nissan put in the bin and yeah. then played it back into the factory. It's insane. Yeah, correct. So we just basically yeah, brought it up three inches, cut it through the back there. Um, yeah. Nothing too major in the rear. Cut the door, a little bit out of the door. Same thing, flares just moved up about three or four inches. Yeah, uh, nothing too wild. Or yeah, like perfect. That, so. Just open that rear door for us. <laughs> it's all right. We're going to fix all that soon. Don't worry about it. Here are the roll bar joiners again, so you can see, yep. um, you know, boom, boom, Allen keys all the way around. And then with a, you know, a, a workshop crane or whatever, you can lift this straight yeah, off. Yeah, forklifts, just get a couple um, of blokes, mate. And, and quite easy. It. There's nothing like bloke on bloke, if you ask me. That's so, it, mate. Um, super sick. Obviously, massive rear hopes, this huge protection all through here, all the infill panels. Yeah. Um, 
People might Bad ask Riley. why the hell it's so over the top. My last Series 4, I had a uh, Series 4 on 40s. Yeah. I had three resprays and I had, I think, three quarter panel replacements and I oh smashed two God. windows out of it. So yeah, okay. I just kept eating the side off it. Yeah. And I just... A bit of PTSD. Yeah, that, right? I was like, yeah. I'm not, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Protect it. Everyone's yeah. like, cut it into a ute. I want to keep it a wagon. So yeah. that's yeah, why we've gone a bit far Yeah, and look, on the other side on the weekend, we touched it up a bit. So we did, yeah, um, put it over on the side twice. This, no, this is gonna get fed. It's not even just here for looks, it's actually been used as actually functional, protecting these really quality, uh, genuine, not so much uh, tail lights and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, super sick. Rear bar, super staunch, tube, rear winch, saved yep. my ass quite a lot on the weekend. Yeah, we used it quite a lot, didn't we? Yeah. Run the 13 XP, yep. budget friendly, super strong, yep. um, fits in the back nicely. Uh, and I think in a car like this, where you don't have to worry too much about a tow bar or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no is, tow bar. This is the scene. goat mod, I think. Yeah. Because uh, I would have been up shit creek without a battle without it. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, it really super well. sick. And then what you probably can't see because it's about 15 foot in the air is it's basically a super tour of this thing. We've got drawers in the back, couple of chainsaws. Normally Dave's got a fridge in there with water and only water. Um, and like you camped out of this thing on the weekend. We did, yeah, yeah, just camped um, out of it, yeah. You know, which is absolute insanity, obviously for an unregistered vehicle, to have drawers in it, to be able to do the tracks that it's done with the suspension that it has, is, uh, well, it really is something. So, mate, you've built an absolute beast. I reckon we cycle it through a suspension some more. We'll show the people what it did off-road and uh, give them a listen to that ZD out the bonnet and um, well, we'll, we'll head our way, go to the pub, I reckon. How good? Oh, it would be good. Yeah, it would be nice. Fucking noise. What do you guys reckon? If you've seen a tougher, full-bodied Series 4 GU, comment below, because I would like to see it. I reckon this is definitely one of the most staunch in the country. Dave and the team have built an absolute weapon. And the beautiful thing is, a lot of the gear that you see on this car can be fitted and purchased through the guys here at Blue Flame. You do all sorts of things, mate. Yeah, we do. So we've got two locations, one on the northern beaches in Sydney, and we've got one just out of Gosford in Wyoming, Central Coast. So yeah, we do everything from your superior engineering, welding, coil conversions, we do diffs in-house, transfer reduction gears, clutches, you name it, all the service work on basically all the four-wheel drives out there. Yeah, super sick. Dave's built my diffs, he's done my reduction gears in the OG Naughty 40. Uh, we'll put all those videos in the description below. And uh, super sick to see this Central Coast store taken off, mate. It's a super nice place you built here. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. Anyway, if you want to find out more about this car or Dave, check out the Blue Flame socials or the Blue Flame website. Otherwise, we'll see you guys soon.